Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of the Evidence-Based Hair Podcast. I'm Dr. Jeff Donovan. I'm a dermatologist and hair loss specialist, and I direct the Evidence-Based Hair Fellowship Training Program. We currently have 126 incredible hair loss specialists from 34 countries training with us. And this podcast is the official podcast of the Donovan Hair Academy. In this podcast, I review studies that are changing how we think about hair loss. I'll introduce you to them, help you make sense of them, and give you my thoughts on how a given study just might change how we diagnose or treat hair loss. Wherever you are in the world right now, please know that you're welcome. This podcast is for educational purposes. I'd like to review today a very interesting study by San Filippo and Friedman titled Survey of Dermatology Practitioners' Opinions and Prescribing Habits of Oral Minoxidil for the Treatment of Androgenetic Hair Loss. Journal of Drugs and Dermatology. Really like this study. It really puts perspective on what practitioners think about oral minoxidil, at least in the United States. And it follows from our podcast last week, which showed that oral minoxidil didn't seem to beat out topical minoxidil in a beautifully designed randomized controlled trial in JAMA Dermatology. Although there was a hint in that PENHA study, I reviewed that photographic assessments might be just a bit better in the crown for oral minoxidil users. So this was a really nice study in the Journal of Drugs and Dermatology about practitioners' opinions about oral minoxidil. We all know oral minoxidil is increasingly popular. What matters most to me is what the science says. What matters most to me is what randomized controlled trials say compared to Perspective trials. What matters more to me is what perspective trials mean than a case report. What matters to me is what good science says. Is oral minoxidil helpful? Is it better than topical minoxidil? What are the long-term side effects of oral minoxidil after, say, 35 years of use? Well, we don't have all these answers. I think it's pretty clear that oral minoxidil is helpful in androgenetic hair loss. We're still debating about how much better it is, and if truly it is better. This nice study last week by Penha and colleagues in JAMA Dermatology suggests that oral minoxidil doesn't really grow all that much more hair on the crown or in the front than topical minoxidil. It failed to beat out topical minoxidil. But just when you think that story is finalized, that nope, We can't conclude oral minoxidil is better than topical minoxidil. We have this interesting data from the PENHA study, which suggests that when you look at photographs, it does seem that photographs of the crown look better in oral minoxidil users and topical minoxidil users. And so maybe there is some difference, but it's not dramatic. And both topical and oral minoxidil users get benefit. It just might be a little better in photographic assessments of the crown. But certainly if I spent my days simply reviewing the most incredibly well-conducted randomized controlled trials and ignored everything else that exists, I'd miss out on a lot of important information. And what matters to me is really a broad approach to this field. What do patients think about diseases and treatments? What do healthcare practitioners think about diseases and treatments? In addition to what good studies think about diseases and treatments. And when I think about the views of patients and when I think about the views and opinions of healthcare practitioners, I call this the pulse, the pulse of the world. So I'm interested in knowing the pulse of the world at all times, as well as what good studies teach us. Because the pulse of the world and what patients think and what practitioners think does not in any way influence what I do in the clinic, but it influences how I do it. It influences how I speak to patients. It influences how I speak to colleagues. It influences what I include in my consult letters. It includes what I discuss with patients. If repeated studies show that drug A is better than drug B, but surveys teach us that the entire planet, patients and doctors alike, think that drug B is better than drug A, well, does it mean that I go ahead and prescribe drug B? 
because that's the view of the world? Well, no. But it means I certainly have my work cut out to counsel patients, and I have my work cut out to explain things to colleagues if truly data shows that drug A is better than drug B. And so this study by San Filippo and Friedman is a nice study. It's one of these studies that tell me what sort of work I have waiting for me when I discuss oral minoxidil with colleagues. The study shows that approximately 10% of practitioners don't feel comfortable prescribing oral minoxidil, 10% don't feel oral minoxidil is well tolerated, 20% don't feel oral minoxidil is better than topical minoxidil, and 20% feel that their patients aren't very satisfied with the results. And so this isn't a study of who is right and who is wrong, it's an estimate of practitioners' views in the United States at a specific meeting. So this is a pulse. It's what I call a pulse. It's an overview of what, what people are feeling and thinking in 2024 at this meeting. So these authors set out to evaluate dermatology providers' attitudes about oral minoxidil, specifically for androgenetic hair loss treatments. And they, they performed an online survey. A survey was sent to those that were attending the Orlando Dermatology Aesthetic and Clinical Conference. The survey participants included dermatologists, nurse practitioners, physician assistants across the United States. The survey was sent to 2,200 providers, and the response rate was just 9%. So most people decided they don't want to do this survey, but there were 200 very special people that felt they wanted to do this survey. And so with a response rate of 9%, it opens the door to all kind of bias. What kind of bias? We don't know. Is it people that love oral minoxidil that fill this survey out? Would they fill out any survey on oral minoxidil? Or is it people that don't like oral minoxidil that fill out this survey? They want to have their views heard once and for all. Who knows? We don't know. But the response rate was 9%. So pretty low. We have to keep that in mind. But here's the key points. 81% of respondents supported the use of oral minoxidil for androgenetic hair loss. Those in practice over 30 years gave the least support. 92% of respondents stated that they were comfortable prescribing oral minoxidil. 83% of respondents felt oral minoxidil was more effective than the topical formulation. 78% of respondents felt their patients were satisfied with the results of using oral minoxidil. And 89% of respondents felt oral minoxidil was well tolerated by their patients. And so I really like this study. Despite the extremely low response rate, this study has a lot to offer. It's clear that the positive views outweigh the negative ones, but we can't discard the negative views. Not everyone shares the same love and infatuation for oral minoxidil. I think that needs to be a key message of this study. Not every one of our colleagues has set sail on the oral minoxidil cruise ship. At least in this study, 10% of practitioners don't feel comfortable prescribing oral minoxidil, 10% don't feel it's well tolerated, 20% don't feel it's better than topical, and 20% feel their patients aren't satisfied with the results. And so if you believe that long-term practitioners who didn't seem to have the same positive view as the younger practitioners or less duration practitioners, if you believe that long-term practitioners are wise and experienced, then you'll find it interesting that they're less likely to be in love with oral minoxidil. If you believe that long-term practitioners are inflexible and rigid in their ways and unwilling to try new things, then perhaps you won't be surprised that this group is less likely to be in love with oral minoxidil. What's your view? I think that these authors really have done a nice study to try to get that pulse. What is the pulse of practitioners on the use of oral minoxidil, at least in the United States? Clearly, we need more studies, 
But I think this study reminds us that up to one in five practitioners have some negative views or concerns about the use of oral minoxidil. And when we tie this study in with the last week's study by Penha and colleagues, we kind of have a little bit more insight into perhaps why this could be. That maybe not everyone improves with oral minoxidil to the same degree that we hope. We certainly see a lot of wonderful results with oral minoxidil. I think those tend to bias us a bit to feel that, wow, you should have saw the patient yesterday with six-month results on oral minoxidil, how incredible it looked. That's true. But sometimes we tend to forget the other patients last week that used oral minoxidil and didn't have a benefit. And so I think the jury's still out in terms of how much better, if truly it is better, oral minoxidil is than topical. I certainly do feel it has a greater number of patients that are pleased than um, than topical minoxidil. But I think the, this comparative data is far from finalized yet. I think the data will be different in males than it is in females. I think that 24-week studies are important, but one-year studies, two-year studies, three-year studies will be also incredibly important. Does oral minoxidil clearly beat out topical minoxidil after five years or not? And what are the side effects of topical minoxidil after 30 years of use? And what are the side effects of oral minoxidil after 30 years of use? Why do we need studies of 30 years of use? Because most men that use minoxidil need decades and decades and decades of use. And so a 24-week study is really, really important for our field. But 30-year studies are are incredibly valuable as well because that's the information that I so desperately need to give to my patients. So I want to thank you so much for joining me today. Next week, we're back talking about some oral minoxidil and topical minoxidil side effects. Uh, An interesting study of the possibility of topical minoxidil causing a change in hair color published in Dermatology Reports, and an interesting study of the possibility that oral minoxidil can exacerbate alcohol hangover symptoms, published in the International Journal of Dermatology. I look forward to sharing those two studies with you. Fascinating studies of oral minoxidil and topical minoxidil side effects as we continue this month of May dedicated to minoxidil.